The DBS multiplier gives you up to 4.1% per annum, up from its previous 3.5% per annum. The UOB1 account claims to give you up to 7.8% per annum with just two simple steps, and the OCBC360 account is giving its highest and merriest interest yet, up to 7.65% per annum. The only thing consistent in the above promotions is the keyword up to. In today's video, I'm going to do the heavy lifting for you guys and deep dive and explore the various features features of each savings account and give you my unbiased opinion as to which is the best saving account to beat inflation. Please note that these informations are accurate as of the time of my researching which is the 1st of December and of course do note that these are my own personal opinions and your opinions might differ from mine. Anyway, Darren here, I started this channel mainly to talk about options but I'll be focusing my attention on personal finance topics as well with a Singaporean context. So do subscribe for more of such videos. The first account on the list is the DBS Multiplier account. Basically, to earn interest at the highest tier, the first component to fulfill is either crediting your salary, crediting your dividends, or connecting to SG Findex. Of the three, I would think that the easiest to fulfill should be the crediting of salary. And the next step will be to fulfill transactions in three of the four categories. As listed in the website, the four transactions will be credit card spending, home loan installments, insurance, and in investments. The good thing to note is that all DBS cards can be considered under credit card spending. As for the home loan installment category, it is good to know that all new as well as existing home loans can be considered and the monthly installment for both cash and CPF are included in the eligible transactions. With regards to the insurance component, well, if you do not have any insurance coverage, you can always log into DBS to apply for an insurance to fulfill that need. I have tried the platform out and based on my age, a $100,000 worth of critical illness coverage for 35 years would cost me close to $70 a month. However, a word of caution, I do not think that it is really prudent to purchase an insurance just to hit a savings criteria as DBS can always change its criteria anytime. The next category will be investments. Clicking the link, you can see various ways to fulfill this criteria. But in my opinion, the easiest way would be to open a DBS Invest Saver. And do note, it has to be purchased after the DBS Multiplier account is opened in order to fulfill the investment criteria. Basically, the DBS Invest Saver utilizes dollar cost averaging to allow us to purchase ETFs and unit trusts on a regular basis without us needing to time the market. The thing about the Invest Saver is the limited choices in ETFs. As of now, we can only invest in these four ETFs with a sales charge of 0.5% to 0.82% per transaction. As for their unit trust selections, they represent 31 fund houses with a wide variety of funds. The sales charge is 0.82% per transaction, which to me is pretty reasonable. However, with Dollar Dex not charging any transaction fees, I'm not sure if this is an option that actually excites me. Hence, despite the marketing claim that it is possible to earn 4.1% per annum for the first $100,000, the question that I pose to you is, are you able to have an eligible transaction of more than $30,000 per month? Let's just assume a hypothetical scenario where someone has a take-home pay of just $4,000 with a monthly credit card spend of $1,000 which is 20% of his take-home salary as well as insurance of $200 a month and investing 10% of his salary which is $400 that will equal to $5,600 a month. Hence, I would think that 2.4% per annum is a more realistic number for the DBS multiplier account. But since insurance to me is a very long-term commitment, what if we already have our own insurance and do not wish to purchase more insurance? Insurance. Then we will drop one tier and earn 1.8% per annum on our first $100,000. By the way, do click the like button if this video is helping you in your research and it really helps a small channel such as this reach a much wider audience. Let us now take a look at the second account which is the UOB one account. At one glance, we can see that the good thing about the UOB One account is the fact that it just takes 
Two simple steps to earn a much higher interest. The first step is to spend a minimum of $500 on your UOB credit or debit card. Of course, the thing to note is that not all UOB cards are entitled. You have to be comfortable using the credit cards listed over here. In fact, spending a minimum of $500 on your UOB card will ensure that your total interest will be as follows. In my opinion, that's a little pathetic. Hence, I'm very sure most people will definitely want to proceed to the next step, which is to either make three gyro debit transactions or credit your salary via gyro. As we can see, the only way to hit the sweet spot will be to ensure that your account has a balance of between $75,000 and $100,000. This is because any amount above $75,000 will earn us a whooping interest of 7.8% per annum. And if you place more than $100,000 into this account, then I'm so sorry, anything above that will just earn 0.05% per annum. Let us now take a look at the fine print. Clicking the total interest table over here, we can see that the maximum effective interest rate for $100,000 assuming that one spends $500 a month on a selected UOB card and credits a minimum of $1,500 of his salary via gyro is actually 5% and that is really high. So if I were to compare both the UOB1 account and the DBS multiplier account now, I'm sure most of you guys will agree that saving with the UOB1 would make more sense as that 5% yield is just too attractive. And even if we only have less than $30,000 in our account, it is still an interest of 3.85%, which is way better than putting less than $30,000 in the DBS multiplier account. Finally, let's take a look into the OCBC 360 account, where it is touted that you can earn up to 7 0.65% per annum for your first $100,000. Just looking at the criteria, I think it's fair to say that it is really not that easy to hit all criteria. To start off, there are six categories to unlock the bonus interest which is paid over and above the base interest of 0.05% per annum. Let us now go through each category one by one. The first category is to credit your salary of at least $1,800 a month via gyro to the account. The next category will be to save and by savings, what we mean is we need to increase our average daily balance by at least $500 monthly. And the third category will be to spend at least $500 a month on selected OCBC credit cards. The selected credit cards will be as follows. The fourth category will be to insure and this criteria is unlocked when we purchase an eligible insurance product from OCBC. These are the list of eligible products. We can see that for a regular premium, the minimum qualifying amount will be $2,000 and this $2,000 refers to the annual premium of the policy. So that's about $170 a month. As mentioned earlier, buying an insurance product just to hit this criteria might not be a wise financial move especially when OCBC can freely change their criteria. So only buy if the product suits your needs. The fifth category will be the invest category and these are the criteria. Basically, we will need to either purchase a unit trust or structured deposit of a minimum of $20,000 or else invest $200,000 into a bond or structured product. The sixth category is to maintain a balance of at least $200,000 and you'll get 2.4% effective interest on your first one. $100,000. Looking at all six categories, it will be safe to say that the first three categories should be the easiest to hit and doing all three will give us a maximum effective interest rate of 4.65% per annum. Okay, so in conclusion, the DBS multiplier account is clearly the worst performing account for now and in my opinion, the clear winner is the UOB1 account as all you need to do is to spend a minimum of $500 a month on selected UOB debit or credit cards as well as credit a minimum salary of $1,800 and you can get 5% per annum for a $100,000 account. And even for smaller accounts, fulfilling both the two criteria will give you a minimum interest of 3.85% per annum. Whereas for the OCBC 360 account, account balances less than $75,000 have to perform a minimum of three criteria in order to earn 3.85% per annum. And with this research, let me go open my UOB1 account right now. See you!